Shalom, all praises to the Lord to the Most High Yahweh, Ba'asham Yahweh, Shah Ba'asham HaKakadash, Dabbalah, Nassan, to the Elder Apostles, a great millstone for the teachings of the scriptures, among other things. Shalom to the Sensei Akim across the world. Now, I had watched this the other day because I already made a video about this, and um, but that video took two hours. I wasn't even paying attention, so I'm going to make it as quick as possible. That was the first intention in the first place, but <laughs> it didn't work out. So I'm going to do it again. And um, I'm going to upload the, the longer version on my other channel. I'm going to just do the short one here. And I'm, I want to make a video about this guy because, like I said, well, in the other video, I said, like I said in the other video, I wasn't watching. I wasn't, like, watching him. I was eating, and I didn't have anything to watch. It was the Shabbat, so I just put him on. And then, as he kept on talking, I kept laughing. It was entertaining. And then he said something here which is not correct according to the scriptures, right? So I'm going to just let you hear what he says and then I'm going to break it down. said how he would deliver us out of six troubles, yea, and seven, there shall no evil touch us. Right, delivered out of, deliver us out of six troubles and uh, in seven, there shall no evil touch us, right? And he said how we shall be in league with the stones of the field. We're, how we should be in league with the stones of the field. Field. Yep, and us being in league with the stones of the field is talking about us being one with the earth and being one with the universe again. So, let me, let, me repeat. Like nature so is let me repeat it again. He's he's talking about his dope or his mushrooms. He's literally communicating with you. That's why Yahweh said in Job the fifth chapter, he said how he would deliver us out of six troubles, yea, and seven, there shall no evil touch us. And he said how we shall be in league with the stones of the field. Yep, and us being in league with the stones of the field is talking about us being one with the earth and being one with the universe again. So he says being in league with the stones of the field is talking about us being one with the universe and... With the stones of the field is talking about us being one with the earth and being one with the universe again. It's talking about us being one with the, sto with the earth and one, uh, one with the universe again, right? Which is spiritual power. Because this whole entire earth... Which is spiritual power. That's what he says, that the being in league... Is with the stones of the field. It was made for us, and we're supposed to be one with it. So when you have manna, it's like you'll be looking at grass. You'll be tracing your fingers along the grass. You'll be standing in front of a tree. You'll be tracing your hands along the branches and everything. That's what they call tree huggers, my man. This is what you do. And he says he's gonna, you're gonna trace your hands around the trees and stuff like that. This is what, this is what he's talking about. He's he's doped up. And then you have another one, which is uh, hippie dancing, where they have their hands all in the air and they're just moving around, waving, just like he said, tracing your hands in the air, la da da, la da 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 da. That's a hippie. That's what he's talking about. But then uh, he looked like a hippie too with that thing on his head. But Job chapter five, verse for seventeen. Behold, happy is the man whom Yahweh corrected. <laughs> Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. For he maketh sore, and he bindeth up. He woundeth, and his hand make whole. He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. In famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. Now, when it's talking about this, it's talking about, the, now, for example, in the seventh trump, that's when the nuclear missiles come. So, uh, Psalms chapter 91 also goes into this. It will explain you also that basically once that time comes, the Most High is going to save us. Nothing will touch us. Not even poison water, not that 5G, nothing. No diseases, nothing. That's what's up. Verse 21. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Now, what are those scourges of the tongue? Because now they make a new loss. The scourge means beatings and chastisement and punishment and stuff like that. And you already know that Esau is the one that his tongue walketh throughout the earth. You can see that here. Psalms chapter 73, verse 9. They set their mouth against the heavens. They speak boldly against the Heavenly Father. One of the things that they say against the Heavenly Father is that then, uh, we came from the Big Bang. Meanwhile, the Bible explains that the Heavenly Father created everything, not some accident. And their tongue walketh through the earth. What does what their tongue walketh through the earth represent? It represents their philosophies. 
people because what they're doing is woe unto them that decree unrighteous decree and a, a decree is a law by a force by authority an official order that has the force of law and that right grievousness which they have prescribed this is grievous because This is what they want to do in, uh, in in Holland. From 1 June, all passengers aged 13 and over will be required. Right, will be required to... Um, let me see, where is it? Where can I find it? Let me see. And, um, Right to have a mask on. And in the in the in the public transportation, trams, buses, water buses, metros, trains, and stuff like that. And if you don't do it, then you will get a fine of ninety euros, I think. Let me see. You're going to get a fine. I'm trying to find it right now. Like these devils give a fuck about you. Yeah. So it says here like uh, businesses get up to 400, uh, 4,000 and people like get to 400. You know, from, from nine, I read somewhere from 90 euros to 400 euros, 350 euros. So these are grievous laws because first and foremost, Nobody can, a lot of people don't have a lot of work. So if you get a ticket like that, you're going to be in more trouble than if you get it normally. But they care about you, right? Right, now it says, Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. All these all these uh, laws that they're setting up, trying to uh, give you this vaccine, they're trying to chip you. So the Heavenly Father is going to keep you away from their laws. You know, from their grievous laws, their scourging tongue, which, which damage people. Neither shall thou be afraid of the destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. And the beast of the earth is talking about actual animals, but it's also talking about people. Because here it shows you that in um, where is it? Ezekiel 34 and also Matthew, Matthew 15. And also Matthew 10. Now Ezekiel 34 and you can read the whole thing if you want to, but I'm going to get to the point. Now it says here, verse 5, Ezekiel 34 and 5. And they were scattered, who? The children of Israel, the flock of my people, right? Because there was no, there is no shepherd and they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. So... Verse 8, as I live, saith Yahweh, surely my flock, which is sheep, became a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd. Neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. And Yahweh Shai said, feed my flock. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So we are the lost sheep. Matthew 5 and 12. These 12 Yahweh shall send forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, which are the other nations. Don't go there. He told the 12. And into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. First Kings chapter 17 will explain. Or was it Second Kings? I think it was First Kings or Seven or First Kings or Second Kings. Chapter 17 will explain why um, he said, don't go there, because the Hamites were there. That's why. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's where we were supposed to, well, that's where they were supposed to go. And that is where we are supposed to go, like talk to, right? Not the other nations, because Yahweh Shai forbid us even from doing that. Now we understand that amongst the other nations, you have our people too looking like the other nations. So now we can go and talk to them. 
you know. But then guess what? We don't need to go there. They will come because the Lord said, my sheep shall hear my voice. So if we speak, you go, you going to find out. If you're one of the sheep of the Lord, you're going to listen. So we don't need to look for you. You're going to look for the Lord himself, yourself. Isaiah 49 and let me see. Yeah, I don't have to read that. Right. Now it says here, right? Now check this out. Job 5 and 23. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. That's talking about actual animals, but it's talking about these other nations because they're beasts. They wanna, they're they going to be at peace with us because we're going to beat the stuff inside of them. That's one of the reasons. And then you have Isaiah 54 and 14. Thus saith Yahweh, the labor of Egypt and the merchandise of Ethiopia and of the Sabians, men of stature. So these people are all tall good people, right? Shall come over unto thee, and they shall be thine. And they shall come after thee, in chains they shall come over. And they shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplication unto thee. What is supplication? Basically, they're going to be begging. The action of asking or begging for something earnestly or humbly. They're going to be begging for an, uh, <laughs> mercy. <laughs> right. Saying, surely Yahweh is in thee, and there is none else. But there is, uh, there is no God. There is no other God. There is only Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Verily, which means surely, verily thou art a power that hideth thyself, O power of Israel, which is Yahweh, the Savior. They shall, they shall be ashamed and also confounded, all of them. They shall go to confusion together that are makers of idols, because they're going to find out there's only one God, and that's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. Well, without end. They're going to be confounded in their God. But we are not going to be confounded in ours because their gods are idols. And our power is the real what we're the real deal. Right. So, they're going to serve us, the Sabians, right? Now, if you go to Joel chapter 3, verse 8. You can read the whole thing for yourself. I'm going to just go to the key point. Let me start maybe here. 6. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians, that ye might remove them far from their border, because we were sold in slavery. Behold, I will raise them out of the place where ye have sold them, and will return your recompense upon your own head. So you're going you're gonna to get what you deserve. You're going to get what you just out, dished out. And I will sell your daughters. The Heavenly Father will do that. And, and I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off, for Yahweh had spoken it. So here again you have the Sabians, and by the way, by the way, these are Hamites. The Sabians are Hamites, the people of Egypt are Hamites, the Ethiopians are Hamites, and the Sabians are Hamites. These are just children of Ham. So we're going to be in league with them, basically, as, uh, as it is written here. We're going to be in league with the stones of the field. And also with the beasts of the field, you know, with the stones of the field of the nations. These are the animals and also also the nations. This is a scripture that says that the Mosai is going to make these uh, animals, the, the, the beasts, the, 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 the fowls and the creeping things all are going to be basically in league with us. Yeah, they're going to listen to us. You know, wh whatever we tell them to do, they're going to do it. Right, if we tell a bird, pluck out his eye, the bird is going to do it. Right. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse, um, which one was it, 14? Nah, I don't have to pull this one. There's a lot of explanation. Uh, first Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice, now you know what malice is, which is malicious, the desire to do someone, uh, the desire, what? The desire to harm someone, ill will, and uh, that looks like Edomite to me. And and all guile, 
triggering. We care about you. We want you to be safe. Sly or cunning intelligence. Cunning, crafty, craft. Uh, right, 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 going on. And hypocrisy. We care about you. We want to help you. We want to help you. We, 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 we care about you. We want to take care of you. We want to help you. We, we love you. We want to, we want to help you. The Washington Star News published an article exposing the United States Public Health Service, PHP. By the way, nowadays it's called Wu. I thought it was a Chinese person in the beginning, but anyway. For a 40-year experiment conducted at Tuskegee Institute that examined, uh, what? That examined the effects of untreated syphilis in Israelite men. So they had over 40 years to do that shit. And uh, they wasn't sorry. They got sorry. They're, they're sorry. They got caught. And um, I think it's here already. Bill Clinton apologizes for Tuskegee experiment. Oh, here's videos. Yeah, I already clicked upon it. He apologizes for syphilis experiment and stuff like that. And they just gobble that shit up like, okay, cool, now what? F fuck you fucking devils. Anyway, you're going you're gonna to pay for that, so it doesn't matter. Shove your shower up your ass. Now it says, wherefore, laying aside all malice, tending to do harm, the devil, the Edomite, even our own people, but now I'm, for, I'm putting it on the Edomites. Malice and all guile, hypocrisy and envies and all evil speakings. As newborn babes, right? That's what you become when you come up in this truth. Newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. The, 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 the milk is word. The word is milk. That they may grow thereby. Because you need to be born again. And also, uh, the land of milk and honey is where we will go to. If so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. To whom coming... To whom coming, so how do we come to the, to the Lord? As unto living stones, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of Yahweh, and precious, yea, uh, sorry, ye also, as live lively stones, are built up a spiritual house. So we are the lively stones. So stones represents people also. Unholy priesthood, to offer of a spiritual sacrifice, acceptable to Yahweh by Yahweh Shai. That's how you do. You get to the Father. You don't go to the Father himself. It's disrespectful. You go to the you go to the Son and he will represent you like an advocate, like a uh, attorney, you know? You don't go to the judge and speak your thing. No, you have an attorney. That's how things go, right? For the knuckleheads. There's a lot of knuckleheads, man. But then again, you will die. Because you don't want to follow the order. Now it says in Romans chapter 9 verse 32. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling block. As it is written, behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling block and a rock of offense. I think I have to put only these two. Yeah, Matthew 11 and, and 6. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Right? So it says, I will lay in Zion a stumbling block and a rock of offense. And whosoever believeth on him, on that, on that stumbling block and on that rock of offense, shall not be ashamed. Right, because he, he's going to save you. You're not going to be confounded in the end. You're not going to be ashamed in the end because you build, you put your trust in Yahweh Shai. And he knows this. And he said, if you deny my, me in front of men, I will deny you in front of the angels and I will deny you in front of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. So, right. 
Uh, let me see if I miss something here. So on, um, yeah, basically that's it. Now going back to over here, Job chapter five, verse twenty-three. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field. Oh yeah, I forgot one. Hmm. Right. It says here the book of Isaiah chapter five. Isaiah chapter five. Now it says here, right? Isaiah five and one. Now I will sing to my beloved. Sorry, I will sing to my well beloved the song of my beloved, touching his vineyard. My well beloved had a vineyard in a very fruitful hill, Jerusalem. The people, the vineyard is the people. He's going to explain. And he fenced it. The Heavenly Father fenced it. He protected it. In the book of Job, chapter 1, you will see what that fence means his protection. A hedge is also a fence. And gather it out, the stones thereof. Deuteronomy chapter 7. He kicked off all the he kicked out all the nations that were in that land. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and 1. He kicked them out. And planted it with the choicest vine. And then he planted that land with the choicest vine. Just like how he planted the man. And that man was uh, uh um um what? Adam. Adam. Genesis chapter 2, verse 8. And Yahweh the power planted a garden eastward in the in uh, in Eden and there he put the man who he had formed yeah I kind of misquoted it but uh, yeah. it's going to show you here so also that uh, the man is planted right going on it's also man man is also seen as a plant and built a tower in the midst of it right what does that tower represent that tower represents Yahweh and it also represents you know Uh, Proverbs 18 and 10. My name, the name of Yahweh is a strong tower. The righteous run it into it and is saved. Right, because the Heavenly Father was protecting us. So that represents that tower. And also made a wine press therein. To, to, to what? Because the Most High says that wine is to make men glad. And, and the Heavenly Father sees us, his people, as wine. That's why he calls us a vineyard which is uh, grapes and he looked that it would bring forth grapes right as you can see here that's a vineyard a wine press to make yourself happy and it brought forth wild grapes sour so gonna mess up your teeth and now O inhabitants of Jerusalem and ye men of Judah judge I pray you betwixt me and my vineyard right now you see that it's talking about the men of the inhabitants and the men of Judah when it was talking about this here. Verse 4. What could have uh, been done more to my vineyard that I have not done it? Done in it. Wherefore? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes, right? Because our people went against the Heavenly Father, man. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 1 on down, speaks about that, shows this too. And now, I see Ezekiel 16, it shows it too. And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, which it was that fence. And it shall be eaten up, devoured of all these other nations. Because these nations devoured the stuffings out of us, man. Because we didn't have no protection. Uh, it's like this. When your girl breaks up with you, right? Let's say your girl leaves you. And you was always protecting her, you know, from getting raped or... or, or in, in, in Haiti, they had this uh, earthquake, and you see the females came there to take food, and the men were stronger than you. So they would just take your food, and now you starving with your kids. What you going to do? You ain't got no man. Your man left you, or better yet, you left him, right? Or maybe he left you, whatever. But you ain't got no man to protect you. So guess what? That's the same thing with us. We as a nation were married unto Yahweh, but we committed adultery like the fucking whore that our people are. So he left us. And now we don't have no protection. Ain't nobody protecting us as a nation. So they devoured us. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 16. But this is what will happen to them. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. And all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go in a captivity, slavery. And they that spoil thee shall be spoiled. And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. So that shows you that we are sheep. They preyed upon us, and they're beasts, because they devoured us. But 
once that protection and that hedge comes back which we which we are building right now we are in that spiritual house we are spiritually building up the nation of israel psalms 51 also shows you that just read the whole chapter you're gonna find it somewhere uh now it says and um let me see i will take away the hedge thereof so no more protection for us and it shall be eaten up and break down the wall thereof no more protection again and it shall be trodden down we're gonna be stepped on and i will lay it waste it shall not be pruned nor digged how do you prune something you uh, for example when you prune tomatoes you need to prune tomato plants because if you don't prune tomato plants you will have a sucker now a sucker is something that has no fruit will give no fl fruit but you need to cut it off because or else um, you will have this over here you will have this you will have these others that they, they stay green meanwhile the rest you know the suckers is gonna suck away the water for the nutrients from that uh, vegetable and it will take longer let's say it take one month to, to for everything to get red but with the suckers it's gonna maybe take a month and a half or two months you know uh, yeah something like that how to prune tomatoes for earlier harvest why because if you don't take away the suckers they're gonna suck away the water from the fruit or vegetable or whatever this thing is right and this is a plant by the way a plant that gives fruit and you have trees that give fruit vegetables right for, for fruit for fruit sorry now going back to over here so our people shall not be uh, ma this maintenance by the heavenly father shall not be done upon our people that's why our people are all messed up in the head right about now right L look at them and i will lay it waste it shall not be pruned nor digged that's how you uh, cultivate the land you beautify the land you dig holes and you 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 fix it up and stuff like that but there shall come up briars and thorns yeah the, the wilderness which represent the cares of this world is also mentioned in the book of luke chapter 8 the briars and thorns also represent the um, luke chapter 8 verse uh, what 50 something hmm? oh no it wasn't all the way there now you can read this for yourself now uh, the, the whole thing and it says here for Luke chapter 8 verse let me see 14 and that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life which is this world and bring no fruit to perfection now what are thorns thorns are this right now if you're a very beautiful plant that gives off uh, gives off grapes uh, you 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 kind of stopping people from actually trying to get to your food because it it's gonna hurt them right and beers is the same thing beers is the same thing yeah right and uh yeah this fruit is uh, it's good for you but it's irritating to actually get it you that's why you need gloves and people don't want to do all that uh like it's too much it's too much let's keep it easy just just get the grapes man just get the grapes you know pick the grapes and that's good because it doesn't it doesn't hurt you well this world will hurt you so now going back to over here now it says but there came uh there shall come up thorns and briars briars and thorns sorry and i will also command the clouds that they rain no more upon it and you know that means death right you know that means death for a plant because we are the plant is going is going to say here because if you don't give the plant water they're going to die and what is the water the water is also an, uh, a representation of this truth which is uh, ephesians 5 and 26 and the other one was you know ephesians 5 and 26 and um, i just had it in my head man Wait, let me see here Wow. Okay, okay. For the vineyard of the Lord, uh, no more rain upon it. And, um, oh, man. What the hell? Okay, cool. Whatever. Ephesians chapter 5 and 26. 
that he might that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water of sorry with the washing of water by the word that's how you basically cleanse uh, yourself by the word and and, and 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 when it is no more rain upon it it will dry up and die so I will also command the clouds that they rain no more upon it because we are we are uh, plan uh, here's going to say for the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression. For righteousness, but behold, a cry. Oh yeah, I got it. Right, it says in um, Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy power, I will also forget thy children. That's why our people are dying left and right, man. I think a couple of days ago, some, some Jake in America got choked out. And the cop was just nonchalant, sitting on his neck. He was just, yeah, li li this guy. He was just used. And what are they doing? No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. This fucking shit don't work, man. Since 1492, these devils have been hating your guts. It's time to get back to the Heavenly Father. Okay? And, and, and then we're going to see what's up. Then he's going to protect us again. And then their little tanks, you know, their little pew pew, you know, weapons of war, uh, vehicles. It's not going to work. This is what we want. But I would want this shit. This is what we want. You know, the men that are crying and sighing for all the abominations that be done in the midst of this earth, and and and, and to us. You know, this is what we want. Yahweh Rath said, "I would help you. I would get you out of this hole so that you can fight with full force. But first, I wait for my power, and then then I want all these things to be in good shape." You know, in good shape. They need all of them need oil or whatever electricity, whatever you got right now. Cause nowadays they got vehicles that don't need oil. They got all these vehicles. They got everything, man. Every this beautiful. They need more. I want more, more. Future war vehicles. Great. Set it up. Do it. Let's go. Let's go, Chip. <laughs> yeah, we want that. Y'all write this up. We want that. Last one, Isaiah 14 and, uh, huh? or is it 54? Isaiah 54 and 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, whether it be biological weapon, because people might be smart and then they say, no weapon that is formed against thee. Well, Let's say I form a weapon against somebody else. Is that gonna work on you? You can try. No weapon that is no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. <laughs> You're a dead man. <laughs> this is the heritage of the servants of Yahweh, and their righteousness is of me. Save Yahweh Basham Yahashai. So it will not be wrong when we smoke you, turn you into dust. But like I said, we hope that you have your shit intact. Your shit needs to be correct. Okay? Fix up your gear and let's start it off. So with that, I'm going to say Shalom.